the gazing eye? Well, gazing or not, that Keyblade does have an eye in it. My eye, to be exact. You need to pass down that Keyblade to your apprentice and then him to his so that my eye can see the future. There is a dark, unknown future that awaits us after the advent of Kingdom Hearts through Remind. The rise of Yazora, the survival of the Master of Masters, and the loss of Sora. In the wake of all this, two very interesting, creepy, and dark theories have been given life due to wild tangents of discovery. With that being said, open your mind a bit into the fifth dimension as I find a way to combine these two theories into an extremely wild Endgame that has taken a life of its own. What's up guys, it's HMK once again with another Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind Theory that deals with the future of Kingdom Hearts and yes, Verm Rex. This theory is going to go off the rails quite a bit and I had a lot of fun with it. So if you're down for that, be sure to like the video, share, most of all, subscribe to HMK for more Kingdom Hearts content every week. With that being said, be brave and let's dive directly into the darkness. So when it comes to these two theories, they are the Sora Corpse Theory and the Sora Gazing Eye Theory. I'm going to give you a TLDR on both in order to set you up for this grand theory, but first I gotta let you know where these came from. The Corpse Theory was given life thanks to Noctis Is My King, Miss Tenbrae on Twitter, thanks to a tangent provided by Verm King, aka Fallacy. And the Sora Gazing Eye Theory was given life thanks to a glitch found by Zeke C in which this discovery let people's imaginations run wild. Big thanks to all of them, I'm gonna leave all of their Twitter accounts in the description box below for you to check them out. Alright, first up is the Sora Corpse Theory, which suggests that thanks to Sora's Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind Secret Episode model, that Sora is a walking, living corpse. That he is technically already dead, thanks to the feature differences of Sora's models from base Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Secret Episode. The discoloration in his hair, his eyes, his lips, and his overall skin tone. Not to mention his fingernails. When you combine all these aspects, it suggests that Sora is going through Palomortis, otherwise known as the first stage of death, in which after death paleness and discoloration happens to the body. So by the time of the secret episode, Sora meeting with Yuzora, Sora is already technically dead in body. Which makes hilarious sense when you consider that everyone said that Sora died at the end of base Kingdom Hearts 3. That's the first theory. The second theory that deals with Sora's gazing eyes was thanks to a glitch discovered by Zeke C in which when you play against young Xehanort in the limit cut episode during his data battle, a glitch can occur if you take out the gummy phone during young Xehanort's final desperation move which in selfie mode results in Sora gaining bloodshot eyes in which the pupil is very much in line with that of the gazing eye within the no name keyblade and since we all know that the gazing eye does indeed belong to the master of masters that allows him to see into the future that literally made the master of master is sore theories gain so much new life but now thanks to these two theories i'm going to combine them into an incredibly wild hypothesis that will attempt to make sense of Sora's predicament his relations and interactions with the Master of Masters and Yazora into the future of Kingdom Hearts, as well as its past. It is that Sora was able to get a glimpse into the future by somehow manifesting the gazing eyes, possibly due to his interactions with young Xehanort. And it was thanks to this glimpse that he saw something extremely dark. The future of Verum Rex, in which technological advancement has pushed humanity to the brink. The once colorful and magical worlds he knew, he knew during his travels, were now replaced with that of industrial progress and weaponry that leaves little room for the imagination of a child. And sure, yes, this was a form of Data Sora that was able to get this glimpse into the future, and that there was no possible way to relay this type of information to his true self. All we needed was the fact that he saw the glimpse and he didn't like it. All we needed was the mere suggestion that Verum Rex could have been that future that Sora saw. It is that future that's even described in the Verum Rex box description with the idea of weapons bringing great benefit for humanity, but the karma that sleeps within humans will accelerate further and in the light of the warhead in the night sky, they choose to fight feeling the pain of their hearts. 
Keep in mind that tangent. And now as we get to the secret episode, when considering the Sora corpse theory, during the meeting of Sora and Yazora, Yazora seemed pretty offended when Sora revealed his identity. Let's play it back. How do you know that? Who are you? I'm Sora. And actually, there's something I have to ask you. Sora? Uh, You're Sora? Huh? You know who I am? Sure. I've heard of you. How would you recognize me as Yazora? Huh? Why are you using Sora's name? Because... I am Sora. If you are who you say, and it was fate that brought us here, then my path is clear. Yazor's choice of wording and mannerism suggested that Sora was known from a past time, almost referring to him and his name in a past tense. And going in line with the Sora corpse theory, it could be possible that if Verum Rex takes place in the future in which Yazora is from, Sora is dead by that time, by his time, the time of Verum Rex, the future of Verum Rex, in which the memories of Sora exist. And with the way that Yazora acted when Sora revealed his identity, it could be possible that Sora was remembered, herald as a great hero for others to strive to be. And that by using Sora's name, possibly not to the standards that everyone held it to be, it was definitely looked down upon as some sort of taboo possibly by the people within the realm of Verum Rex. Sora was held as a hero so much so that this would make sense of the insignia on the jacket of Yazora, the spiky hair, skull, and crossbones made of keyblades along with a crown. This obviously looks to represent Sora and is more likely dedicated to a memory of a possible sacrifice on the part of Sora, in which it was adopted by the company that Yazora is a commander over, and that the true fate of what brought Sora to Yazora is of course for Yazora to save Sora, and now we know why. Yazora was given a mission to save Sora who had been long dead by the future that is Verum Rex where he's from. And to Yazora, he had to try and save Sora by restraining him by force. If Yazora were to win, then Sora becomes crystallized and preserved, keeping him from truly expiring. But if Sora wins, then Yazora's powers aren't needed quite yet, as Sora's victory would tell Yazora that Sora isn't ready to die just yet, and that the point of time in which Sora and Yazora met wasn't the true point in time in which Sora was going to die, hence why his powers aren't needed yet. But this isn't where the theory ends. Now we must dive into other branches. It is quite possible that Sora's appearance that will give him the guise of a corpse is due to spending too much time in the final world, as someone who spends too much time there might be represented with characteristics of someone who has died or passed on. As the name suggests that the final world is the final world. There is nothing beyond that for those who have died. With that association with death, it could be possible that those that reside there but aren't truly dead will gain that appearance. But remember that aspect of the final world. Now let's talk about the reason why the Master of Masters was in Shibuya during the Azora Secret movie. In part, this thanks to Sora being able to manifest the gazing eyes. As if Sora was able to see Verum Rex and Shibuya, then the Master of Masters would be able to see it and possibly be there as well. As everything his eye is able to see, it relays back to him. But then comes the notion that this wouldn't work because the nameless star who is associated with Yazora and Verum Rex had already wound up in the final world to talk to Sora. How can she be from the future? Well, that is because the final world is literally the final world, a constant that is outside of time for those that truly lost themselves, such as the Nameless Star and the rest of those that have died only to have their hearts trapped within the final world due to their lingering feelings. While the final world is constant for these individuals, it is not for those that are still held together like Sora and Yozora. However, it is no easy feat for those to get to the final world and remain like themselves. But it was something that Sora was able to do, and that is the secret, that is the point that ties this all together. For those that are still held together, the final world can act as an entry point, like a gate to interact with those from different times and even able to exit at different times. Ever see Avengers Endgame? 
kind of like the quantum realm, but not entirely. This can explain how the Master of Masters jumps from different times and different universes, as he appears in Union Cross, and then again before young Xehanort, and again in Shibuya. And how he is truly able to is all thanks to Sora, as if the Master of Masters and Sora and Yuzora are all truly one in the same person. Check out my One True Sky theory about that. Then they both, Master Masters and Yozora, use Sora as a conduit, a portal, to enter and exit their times through the final world. We've seen that the Master of Masters can even enter the final world in Melody of Memory. Thanks to Sora going into the final world at his point in time in Kingdom Hearts 3 and evidently being trapped there, the relation and connection between Sora and the Master of Masters allow him to enter the final world, since he is already there, and exit at these various points in time. And this even spills over into Yozora as in his case, he stumbled upon the final world thanks to his connection with Sora using Sora as a conduit, although he is from the future. We even get the idea when Sora's Station of Awakening lights up below both of them. So it's Sora being trapped in the final world at his own point in time. He is able to act as a portal for those connected to him in a very drastic way from both the past in the Master of Masters and the future in Yazora, just like how Xehanort is able to do so with his many other selves throughout Kingdom Hearts. And it is thanks to this idea that Riku was able to look into Sora's plight with Sora's connection to the Master of Masters and Yazora through his dreams. And this is the end game that has brought together and given life thanks to these two theories, the corpse theory and the gazing eye theory, leading into the idea that connects Sora, the Master of Masters, and Yazora past, present, and future in a huge way. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it opened your eye to the madness. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Be sure to like, favorite, share, and most importantly subscribe to HMK for more content every week. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for help making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, you can check out all the info in the description box below. Alright guys, until the next message from the 5th dimension, this has been HMK and I'll check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.